Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. The much talked about movie Detroit has opened locally and it's generating a lot of conversation about race, police brutality, and of course inequality. The film focuses on the 1967 killings of three black teens at the Algiers Motel during the Detroit Rebellion. Three white police officers were acquitted in their deaths. Joining me now to talk more about the movie is Charles Farrell from the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History and civil rights activist Reverend Dan Aldridge. Both of you, welcome to American Black Church. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, uh, Charles, I'll start with you. Uh, talk about where this movie fits in the narrative that we have been constructing now for almost a year and a half around uh, this look back at 1967. Absolutely. We, the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History has really been focused on looking at uh, rebellion at a large historical arc. We've uh, created over 67 programs uh, in order to be able to interpret and to understand what happened between July 23rd and, 9th, and July 28th, mm -hmm. obviously one of the most significant aspects of the uh, Detroit Rebellion, which was the largest to occur, of 384 rebellions in 298 cities from 67 to 68, uh, was this assassination uh, that occurred uh, at the Algiers Motel of uh, teenage, three teenagers, Carl yeah. Cooper, uh, 17, uh, we have uh, Fred Temple, uh, 18, and Aubrey Pollard, uh, 19. Uh, so it's very brutal uh, murder that brings into focus the catalyst for mostly all these re rebellions was police violence, police terrorism. So that's really at the center heart sure. uh, of the issue of looking at rebellions and the people's response to oppression. Yeah. Uh, what about this movie? Uh, does, it, does it tell the story the way it needs to be told? Well, the movie actually uh, used some creative artistic treatment, so it's not a documentary. It doesn't tell the story with uh, uh, accuracy, but it does bring to the fore uh, the brutality, and you actually front and center uh, with the brutality and, and the murders that occurred. So it brings into focus the, the racism that perpetuated uh, African Americans' experience uh, through the police. So that becomes very apparent, as well as the exoneration of these murderers, which really speaks to the current issues is taking place today throughout the United States. So it can foster some, some dialogue yeah. and some corrective action that needs to take place in the country. Yeah, in fact, the families never even receive <coughs> so much as an apology from uh, Detroit police for, Absolutely. for, for what happened. Uh, Reverend Aldridge, you were part of uh, one of the few efforts, if any, to uh, extract some justice from from what happened. Talk about the tribunals that... Uh, well, I'm the primary organizer of the uh, Algiers Tribunal. Mm -hmm in which uh, a community of people, um, many of us, uh, Carolyn Keish Kilpatrick was a part of it, mm -hmm. Milton Henry, his brother Richard Henry, uh, Kenny Cockle, Ed Vaughn, Rosa Parks, uh, John O'Killens, the novelist um, Frank Joyce. We were all a part, Justin Rabbits, of trying to construct um, a trial which, was, which, which actually dealt with the evidence. Mm -hmm. In the original trial, original preliminary examination, they never called any black jurors, any, any black witnesses. Uh, by the way, that's akin to the movie, yeah. in which in the movie, the primary person, the story is told from the point of view of one of the white prostitutes, who in the movie is not a prostitute. She was just two women in Ohio decided to come to Detroit because they wanted to hear some black, some black music. Mm -hmm. They came just for the music. Anybody thinks that two white young women <laughs> came to a transit motel. <laughs> on, a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> on, on Virginia. So that, that, that is really yeah. how they found their way there. Yeah. Um, so it's told, <coughs> excuse me, the other problem is that the movie is just brutal. Yeah, let's talk about that that depiction of yeah. these incidents. I mean, that's what I've heard a lot of people. Yeah, react I call to. it a combination between a horror film, a war story, and an old-fashioned shoot 'em up involving Hoop Gibson. It's so narrowly focused. All you focus in is just the beating. So, so if you so you can sit there and just watch two and a half hours of just watching people beating as a black person. That's I tell hard people to see. it was hard to see. Plus, my side kept losing. We didn't have any victory we, we, at all. We just kept losing right. for two and a half hours. Yeah. But, so it doesn't tell, it could have been Detroit, but it could have been anywhere. 
So it really doesn't talk about Detroit. It doesn't, it doesn't put it in that context. No do, context. Do, do you feel like there's a, a, a point to, to showing how brutal this is? I mean, given that, that most people, if you ask them, probably don't know that much about the Algiers Motel. That's incident. correct. That's uh, correct. Is there a purpose to showing it in this way that, that does shock the conscience and, and make you think differently about it? Well, I think it's an important story that people do not know about, yeah. the Algiers Motel uh, murders. We redefined it in, in, uh, in terms of John Hershey's uh, the book that was published in 1968. He calls it an incident. Yeah. Charles Wright had a program featuring uh, uh, Dan Aldrich, Lonnie Pete, who was both in the Tribunal, and Danielle McGuire, who's writing a book. Yes. And we called our program the Algiers Motel Teenage Murders by Racist Police. Right. So we can make it very clear. But I, what, again, in terms of what's going on in the country today, mm -hmm. it puts on a very large screen the brutality of, and the racism yeah. of, of the police department and then the injustice system that occurred with their exoneration. So, uh, you know, from that extent, if it can foster can some dialogue to, and start to make some corrective changes yeah. to what's taking place, yeah. then I think it's useful. Yeah. It is a very challenging scene for someone who was uh, beaten severely by the police well, at age 12 and a this, half right. by uh, stress officers, which was an outgrowth from the 67 rebellion. That was the reaction. Yeah, that was a reaction with uh, Nick, Nixon coming into power, uh, both uh, uh, LBJ, uh, 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 Johnson, President Johnson, and Nixon both eliminating the Kerner Commission, right. which puts front and center the issues of structural racism. Mm -hmm. So uh, the response was in Detroit to establish stress, right, which was uh, the high, largest per capita killings yeah. uh, anywhere in the yeah. country yeah. over 22. And, and, and uh, that, of course, leads, the reaction to that is the election of Coleman Young. That's as, correct. As mayor of Detroit in 1970. Absolutely. Uh, quickly, before we have to end, uh, Talk about then versus now. Do you feel like the things that you guys did in response to Algiers made, made change that we see today? Well, I think it presents a model. Um, in fact, they're doing a major presentation on this in Japan, Japanese huh. public. Japanese public uh, television doing a major story, in large part doing a major documentary on me and my role in this. It's not about focusing on me. It's focusing on the fact that it has to be a forum. There has to be some process. You cannot let police just wantonly kill people and nobody does anything. So what we did is point out the facts. They're very difficult. I have a picture which some of you saw about the tribunal. The free press has all of that. The free press and the news have basically killed all their pictures. They had over a hundred pictures. They had never shown any of it. Uh, of, the tri the, of the tribunal. The tribunal. Because yeah. I arranged with the free press through William Serin to, to have yeah, no, that. Bill Serin, yeah. So I, I made the specific arrangement. Bill Seren, I talked to him afterwards, he said the editors said to kill it. Yeah. And they wanted to make sure that no pictures of this were ever seen, wow. both the news and the free press. And the only thing, the news printed nothing. The free press, Bill said, told me they could do two paragraphs of this. Wow. And we had over 3,000 people standing in the church and all the way across on the other side of Woodward. On the other side, I'm sorry, Linwood. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, but communities have to take more responsibility, I think, uh, to, to challenge police, you cannot let police just wantonly uh, kill people. For me, it's not the police, uh, the, the persons who also who are in charge of the police. We right. always blame the police, but no one ever talks about who's in charge who's, of the police. Who they answer to. Who they answer to. Yeah. Okay, uh, we could talk about this for eight hours, but uh, we're out of time. I want to thank both of you for being here, though. My pleasure. Yes. Thank you very much.